Okay, we're going to look at implementing Enfazi Roth uh, rubber dampeners. Um, in my opinion, the most significant update you can make to visual pinball physics. And people will say physics are subjective and everybody likes their own thing. But, I mean, Enfazi did quantitative research to show that this is how a ball behaves, uh, or more accurately, how a ball behaves, compared to you know any variation you can just simply... Uh, make in visual pinball so um, I can't play a game that doesn't have this and uh, I think once you recognize it in a game uh, you won't be able to either it is that significant so uh, I have uh, schizo's monster bash and I'm grabbing a large and a small uh, mesh from there they're on layer 11 I'm gonna copy and paste that to the game we're gonna update in this case it's uh, taxi and I chose Taxi because the way the rubbers are set up is pretty representative of how rubbers are set up in most games. And it's really well built. I mean, there's some games that, you know, somebody tried something goofy or somebody just did not make things the way they actually are in a pinball machine. And, um, you know, maybe that needs to be rebuilt instead of just getting a, a physics update. But um, for most tables, this is how, you know, rubbers are implemented. Uh, we can look at a couple variations at the end if we want but um so uh on layer 11 i'm going to put uh, those meshes from the other game because those are going to come and be the things that the ball collides against and then um just a really quick overview so stick with me here or fast forward if you know the editor pretty well but i think these are uh, important things to point out um, these elements are locked you can unlock them by selecting and then unlocking and then you can move them um, but if they're locked, you can't um, make changes to them except over in the options editor. So, all right, so there's that. And then there's collections, and we need to understand how collections work. Uh, collections are table elements. They can be different types of table elements. They don't need to all be the same. Um, but they help us categorize things and also call things to those elements. Um, so, for example, in A Plastics, uh, this is a sound um, call in the script. It, anything in a plastics that gets hit plays a specific sound. So if we go into that, we see that uh, these six elements on the table are in this directory and are calling that sound when they get hit because fire events for this collection is on. If I turn that off, nothing would happen when the script uh, called these. So this needs to be on if something happens in the game with these elements. The other thing that um, can be helpful and can be frustrating is this uh, group elements together box. Um, so if I turn that on and I click one of the elements in that collection, they all get selected. And this is helpful because I can go make global changes now to the elasticity or, or whatever. Um, but uh, it can be sort of painful if you go to move one element. I'll unlock these so I can show you. So I think I'm just going to move this element and I grab it. I don't see that something else is selected elsewhere, maybe off screen, and I start moving it, and I say, oh, I want this here. And then I've sort of messed up a whole bunch of other things on my game. So it's just something to be aware of. If something's in a collection and um, this is checked and you need to leave it checked for whatever reason, um, you can shift click and just get that one element and work with it. But be careful because if you grab it again, you grabbed everything. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, and then the other thing to be aware of when you're um, changing things for elements like this, if, um, let's say, two of the things in this uh, group aren't visible and uh, the other ones are, if I select everything in this group, th uh, this box shows it as not visible. Okay, It's just because sh there are different variables, but it looks like none of them are visible. It's not true. So if you're changing something to visible or invisible, you want to click it and then unclick it. Now none of them are visible. Um, so anyway, that's how that works. And you, you kind of need to know how those work because um, we use collections a lot to make this happen. All right, so what we're doing now is we're going to take all the rubber elements that the ball hits in the game we're going to make them not collidable anymore, just visual. So you only see them, the ball never touches them. And we're going to replace them uh, with something that works much better. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go to 
the select element tool and I'm going to sort by type and I'm going to find all of the rubbers there they are okay so I'm going to select them there they are I'm going to right click there's you know, 45 elements up here, you can say it's 45. And they all happen to be rubber because um, we still have these options here. If these options aren't here, it means something in the collection that you grabbed or something that you also have highlighted. Like for example, if I highlighted this gate as well, then we don't really have any options. But if we get rid of that gate, everything's a rubber and we can make um, changes to you know a lot more of these things. So if I right click all the things that are highlighted right now, all these rubbers, I want to move these to a different layer so it's easier to find them. I'm going to move them to layer 10. Because now I can go to layer 10 and just see all the elements I need to work with. They're still highlighted, so um, I want to turn them off. They're no longer collidable. The ball will just pass right through them now. It's exactly what I want. And I'm going to turn on layer 11 too, which is where I place these. So the basic idea here is that the ball interacts differently where there are posts than where there are not posts. Um, and so we are going to put these elements where there are posts. Still acts like rubber, but is not the same. Um, so I'm just going to take this and um, I'm going to copy. Well, let's do physics uh, materials first. Um, so one really uh, convenient way to manage your physics is to use uh, materials. It's easier to change uh, all of the physics settings for a certain type of element at once this way. There it is. So we're going to pull this in. And this is all the um, Z-call stuff from uh, the Monster Bash game. I guess should have just shown you how to do this. So you would just go here. These are all the physics. You would export those to a .mat file and then you would import them here. Alright, so I've got them. These are going to set our physics. So I can grab this and look it already has rubber posts because um, that was the name of it in Monster Bash so that's cool. But as you you know, as you update the whole table, uh, not just the um, not just the rubbers, you're going to use that. So, you know, look, we've got this metal wall right here. The uh, physics material is no longer going to be the one that was set in the game. We're just going to go ahead and set it to metal with some fall off. So, you're going to do that for everything, but not now. That's not what this tutorial is. Back to business. Okay. So that's there. And then um, we need a collection to put these in. The collection is going to be called D posts. And we need to make sure that fire events for this collection is selected because we need some uh, things to happen in the game when a ball hits one. So, all right, there we go. So we got that, and we're just going to go around and copy and paste everywhere where there's a post. And right now we're going to do that based on what these rubbers look like, and then later we are going to go in and just double check that there aren't some places where there are posts that we don't see from here. Um, you can fast forward for a minute, I'm not going to edit this video. You know what, screw it. I'm just going to do this much of it for now. And then for pins, um, you would do this. And these have a different material. Uh, rubber pegs instead of rubber posts. But they still get put in this um, dampening collection. So, okay. So what I could do is um, just turn on 11 and grab all of these. And then 
um, you know, that's checked because some of them are in deep post, not all of them are. So again, I mean, this is dumb editor stuff, but it's what we have. So now they're all in there. And you can double check that by doing this. And you can see, you could also remove one or add one like that. So, all right, so now all of these are um, collidable. And the part that we need to change now is um, to put a wall across here to handle this part of the physics collision. So I'm just going to create a wall, try to make it kind of seamless so there isn't a lip or anything weird that the ball would bounce off of. There are ways to do this, I think, faster and easier in Blender if you're comfortable in Blender. But if you want to do this all in the editor, this is what you're going to do. And then this um, doesn't go into deep posts, doesn't have a, a dampener, um, but it does need a rubber physics material. And in this case, that's the rubber band. Okay. You want the hit event to be on for this. Um, if you want a sound um, to play when the rubber band gets hit. I don't because it doesn't really make much sound when the rubber band gets hit. These, however, um, you want to make sure your uh, hit threshold is at 0.5. And these, uh, you know, they're already in deep posts, but I also want to hear it when they get hit. So I'm also going to add them to a rubber posts because that's the directory where uh, the sound is being called. So anyway, and that's basically it. Uh, let me show you just a quick variation. And that's where um, sometimes across a stretched rubber band, you'll see a post. Yeah, like right here. All right, so here we have um, a rubber band that is stretched like this. And so we would put this here and this here. But if we look, there's another post here. And so the ball is going to behave here the same as it does over here. So don't forget to be thorough and do something like that. And we're actually going to bring that all the way out to the edge of there. And really, there's very little like rubber band material here. I would actually, if this were my project and I were going to put a lot of time into it, <clears throat> I would create a third physics material to be sort of a midway between a post and a stretched rubber band and put it in between these. Um, but that's a little bit more of a nuanced thing. And um, so those things are kind of at your discretion as you get into this and, and want to do this um, you know, more accurately. Uh, there's also like post sleeves, and I don't, I don't think there are any in this game. I guess I should have looked. Um, that's the tall uh, sort of cylinder looking things. And um, so if you had those elements, you would, you know, size it to the size of whatever that rubber is. You would just do that using, you know, scale, not along Z because that's up and down, but your X and Y. So say you needed to be smaller, you could just change it like that. And then um, that specifically, you would um, create a collection called D sleeves and put it in that. And then you'd also need to make sure that you were firing events for that collection. All right, so you um, you know iterate this um, until you're done. And then it would be wise to go take a look at everything you've got. And if it's a sleeve, you know, pull it out separately. But make sure that they're all um, in that directory or you're going to have bad, you know, physics response. Um, make sure your physics materials are set correctly. In this case, this pin is a different material and so it wasn't showing. Okay, they all have the posts. All the pins have pegs and all the we said this was a sleeve and so then let's make it a sleeve okay and all the sleeves have sleeves okay so those are set up 
we can sort of see um, oh I guess you know the other thing I would do is the walls that you add across the stretch rubber bands maybe make those also part of that layer 11 so you can see all the places where the ball is colliding with those and you can double check them by turning off 10. You just want to make sure you're thorough because you you know you start removing things and then things don't work out so well. Okay so we need one uh, timer added and this timer is going to be called R dampen dampen and interval of 10 it's going to be enabled. Okay so that's running whenever something gets hit, uh, whenever the rubbers get hit, and then we need to add uh, some scripting. So from wherever you are viewing this, um, you want to get the file that uh, is called rubber functions, and you're going to copy and paste that. And then you're going to get the file that's called Core Tracker. And you're going to copy and paste that. So that should be all we need to do um, on Taxi. I mean, just you know, finish it up. Um, but to get the rubber dampeners working, just make sure that your physics materials, um, you know, match the tutorial as well. You can't just do that and then skip the rest and expect it to play well. Um, but if you, you know, you change this to the recommended values, um, I think it's going to, right, you know, right out, out of the gate, you're going to be like 85, 90% improved. And then there's places you can tweak and adjust your table slope and you play field friction up and down a little bit, you know, from here. One thing you might uh, find that's a little different as far as layout is like in a JP Salas table. You know, he already separates out the post from the rubber band, uh, which is nice when he sets up his tables, uh, but it doesn't have the rubber dampening in. So um, you want to make sure that you add the, the rubber dampeners to get his tables to play nice. And of course, again, um, to, you know, change those values to the recommended amount. Um, he's been doing like the low friction thing uh, that Word and, and Roth had done for a while and um, you know, it gives you a better side to side motion with the ball but the ball still behaves just crazy off of posts and gives you a lot of weird spin too so um, you know these values with the Enfazi uh, scripting um, are going to get you like just so um, so dialed in right off the bat um, so anyway that's all I got I hope that's helpful. Let me know what wasn't helpful or what I didn't cover, and uh, we'll get it covered. Thanks.